early 19th century, along came an English painter called John Constable, who painted in a manner that had not been seen before. Above all, he was not frightened of his paint, and in many of his landscapes he would lay it onto the canvas with a freedom and radiance that had an enormous influence upon the Impressionists who followed after him. In order properly to savour the story you're going to see now, you should be aware of the fact that the discovery of a hitherto unknown painting by Constable is a great event. His work fetches huge sums on the market. <laughs> such a thing as one clean shirt. I've been busy. It's about time you got somebody else to do your iron. Some chance of that when I'm working 40 acres single-handed. Anyway, what do you want a clean shirt for this time of day? I'm going into town. Oh, good. And you won't mind calling in at Webster's and seeing if my orders come. Yes, all right. Oh. What a fuss about one little parcel. Your one little parcel means waiting half an hour in a queue. You can ask for the manager. <sighs> no buttons. Thanks. I'll be back at four for feeding. And maybe you could feed me for a change out of a saucepan instead of a tin. <laughs>
I'm sorry, I, uh, I was hoping there'd be somebody at home. Good afternoon, madam. My name's Pottinger. I was just wondering if you've got any old stuff you wanted clearing, you know, any old bits and pieces you'd like me to take off your hands? Furniture, oil lamps, china, glass. We've nothing here that would interest you, Mr Pottinger. You'd be surprised. The old lady at the farm down the road said exactly the same thing. I looked in the garage. She got a, a ringer. I gave her a fiver for it. She thought it was Christmas. I'm sure you could find me one or two bits. I'm interested in anything. Old sewing machine, string box, toffee tins, rag rugs, patchwork, tea caddy. Oh, I've uh, two old irons I found in the barn. Are they the flat sort? No, box kind, I think. Are you sure? Almost certain. I'll give you a tenner for the pair, sight unseen. Oh, he sounds a bit fierce. He's quite harmless. He's chained up. I'm glad to hear it. I can't stand the damn things. I should get danger money calling on farms, you know. You come round the corner of a barn, somebody's always taking a pot shot at a rat or a rabbit. The other day, I got a two two bullets straight through the windscreen of my car. Smashed a porcelain vase I'd just pay £40 for. Come in, Mr. Pottinger. Very good. Oh, that's a lovely place you've got here. A bit shabby, but I'm not like some women in a state of permanent interior decoration. Uh -huh. Hey, I could give you 15 for this if you're interested. Come in, Ellie, if you've got kids to help like I have. Oh, I've got a son. He's grown up now. How old does he do? He works the farm. He's gone into town. He'll be back for feeding. He's what I call a moaner. Always grumbling about the weather, the land, the rotten stock we've got. He wants to get out. But I'm not budging. He'll have to carry me out of here feet first, as they say. Those are irons you mentioned. I'll get them for you. This time I'm rooted, rather like a gnarled old oak tree. 
Here are the items. Sure. It's not quite what I had in mind, but I'll, I'll keep my word. I'll still give you a fiver. I think you said ten. Did I? Oh, my mistake. Still no problem. Oh, well, you were quite right to come and see me. I acted as your father's solicitor for 20 years. This is something he'd have wanted me to handle. So you'll help me? Well, if I can. Because it's going to be a bit difficult dealing with your mother. Well, perhaps if you asked her to come and see you on some other matter. Yes, yes, that might be possible. Because it is important. I must get it settled as soon as possible. Whatever she says. Yes, all right. My son would kill me. He loves these old things. After I've gone, they'll remind him of home. Not that there was ever much to remember. And then poor old Teddy, my husband. He always had this dream of retiring to a Suffolk farmhouse. He was born in Suffolk. Owning a little bit of England, as he called it. Of course, it was too much for him at his age. Too much for Andrew at his age. The doctors told him, but he wouldn't listen. Well, he died. And I'm still here. Everyone has their problems, I suppose. Oh, uh, I've got them coming out of my heroes. I mean, my partner. If I pay 40 for something and he knows it's a snip, he said, why don't you get it for 30? He can't help it. It's, it's his nature, I suppose. Money's the root of all evil. Eh? The love of money is the root of all evil, Mr. Pottinger. That's what the Bible says. Love of money. Oh, stand corrected. A common misquotation. You'd like a cup of tea? That's very kind of you, but you see, I've... I've... You're absolutely sure of what you've told me? Dead sure. It's a serious matter. I know. I'm very worried. Your mother. Right. Well, she won't listen to anything I say. Well, that's why I had to act independently and come and see you. I didn't like to go behind her back, but I didn't have any choice. on this clock if you're interested. Anything you want, you must ask my son. We know your sort only too well around here. What do you call Knockers, any old lamps, any rubbish you want cleared. Andrew says anything I want to sell, I must ask for a free valuation from the auctioneers at Ipswich. Shouldn't be long now. Nice little picture. Frame it, fetch about thirty. Really? I didn't know. I found it in the attic. Has it uh, like been in the family long? No, not our family. It belonged to the people we bought the farmhouse from. They uh, just left it. Look, I, I won't mess you about. I'll give you 30 for the frame and 100 for the picture. A hundred? Well, the law's a bit complicated on this one. It depends on what is said and, of, of course, whether there's a witness. Hello, Lucy. Hello. Hi. Hi. You know my niece. We met. Some awful charity dance. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm a lousy dancer. <laughs> You're not that bad. In my day, of course, one had to learn the steps. Oh, slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. You can scoff. I was considered to be quite a good dancer. I've danced with your aunts, Lucy, and probably with yours, too. Horses and tangos. Yes, well, I can see I must be going. Give my love to your parents, Lucy. I'll be in touch, Andrew. 
I'm sorry, did I interrupt a business conversation? Or was it pleasure? Oh, pleasure every time. I don't believe you. You're not in a particular hurry. past your farm the other day. It's a sham. <laughs> I like it. There are some houses oh. make you wonder what goes on inside. 99% of the time, nothing goes on. That's the trouble. What about the other 1%? Cheers. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'd give the farm up if I could do anything else. What about your mother? Well, I'm fond of her, but oh, she's a bit eccentric. I thought perhaps she was. Never mind. My whole family is stark raving mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I can't waste any more time. I've got a living to earn. I'll tell you what. I'll give you two seventy-five. I'd like to give you some more, but I don't deal direct. I mean, my partner has to have his cut. Then there's the middleman before the customer even sees it. All right, my partner will think I've gone stark raving mad, but I tell you what, I'll give you the 300. I hope it will go to someone who will appreciate it. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll find a good home for it. Right. Well, right. It's been nice talking to you. Tell her. Mr. Pottinger, your hat. Oh, here. Yeah. Don't forget me if it wasn't screwed on. Tell her. Have a word. What about? I know what you've got. Here's your money back. 
You've got more chance of being struck by lightning. Yeah, but you don't understand. I understand, all right. Look, I've done a deal. The deal's a deal. That's all the I'm bothered about. I don't understand. There now, you can't grumble. All of your shirts are ironed. Though why you can't have drip dry like everyone else does? Mother, I'm acting in your interest. I'm trying to help you. Then help me by letting me be as I am. It's my only pleasure. And as my mother used to say, we must all make the most of our talents and our chances.